When I first heard about Code Realize, I thought it was too good to be true. It caters so much to all of my kinks. It features a female lead who is not completely useless, surrounded by a charming cast of pretty boys who are all based on famous literary or historical figures and they have a corgi. It is set in a steampunk version of Victorian London, takes me on a weekend trip to Scotland and in between all that we just kinda saved the world. Such a game can't possibly exist, can it? My name is Christine, this is Hamstackle and let's find out whether it lived up to my expectations. realize you're taking over the role of Cardia who has lost her memories. The only thing she knows for sure is that she's supposed to stay in an old mansion as she's considered a monster. Everything she touches melts away due to a poison in her body. That poison makes her the target of good and evil powers and leads her to meet our male protagonists. Arsene Lupin, Victor Frankenstein, Abraham van Helsing, Impi Barbican and saint -Germain. Everything that is good about Code Realize is unfairly good to a degree that I feel like I will never again enjoy another Otome game. That is why the bits and pieces that didn't go the extra mile are so aggravating. Funnily enough, most of my issues lie in the nature of the game. It's a visual novel and a dating sim at that. The first eight chapters are solely focused on building up Cardia's character. You follow along as she slowly turns from a slightly apathetic state into a fully rounded character. That alone is amazing. You are introduced to everything and everyone you need to know and she is strengthening her bond with all of the five possible love interests. The last five chapters focus on the guy you spend the most time with. They are more or less directly connected with Cardia's conflict. However, depending on the character, the level of immersion differs largely throughout those last five chapters. Their backstories are mostly locked away into their own roots, as you're supposed to play each and every one of them. You have to anyway if you want to spend quality time with Lupin. It can make understanding the motives and behavior of some of the characters very hard though. Sneak previews of what I can expect in the second half would have been nice. I started out with Victor's route, which I consider the best integrated one. Throughout the entire game you're spending a lot of time with him and his conflict is intertwined with Cardia's. The most important scene to find out more about him was a dream sequence of his past. Think of dream sequences what you want, but it gave me enough information to find out more about him and bring the two segments together, giving the entire storyline a very fluent, well-rounded feeling. By the time the final chapters unfold, it's both confirmation and more detailed explanation of everything the player already started to piece together. All five characters have a similar scene as an introduction into their conflict, but you only get to see them when it might already be too late to get the player to care. Victor's nightmare stays in the main story the entire time, no matter which route you choose. I wish it was interchangeable with the memories of the other characters, for the sake of Sergeant Moore and Van Helsing alone. Due to their personalities, they are the two characters you get to know the least. Their stories are also the ones that stray the farthest away from Cardias, hence needing the most build-up. Suddenly the game had to rely on something that felt a lot like clumsy info dumping, not even connected to any given situation, just plain old exposition. This lack of empathy and information causes a huge shift in the narrative and gave the chapters an overly drawn out feeling. Cardia, forgetting everything she has learned over the course of the first eight chapters in certain situations, only added to that. Those situations were usually ones that were supposed to set up more or less romantic scenes. It is particularly vexing in routes that have a perfect payoff for Cardia's conflict. One of the most adverse topics in Code Realize is humanity and what it is that makes someone human and in contrast what might take that humanity away from them. By the end of chapter 8 we've spent approximately 15 hours in the main story, finding answers for this and many other questions in the process. The characters' relationships have been well enough established without ever saying anything out loud. They trust and care about each other because of all the stuff they had to figure out together. I, the person behind the screen, trust them and want to spend more time with them. The same goes for your love interest. By the end of chapter 8 you've already shared a couple of moments to create an emotional bond. Not through fancy speeches, but through actions. And don't get me wrong, I too can't have enough of Junichi Suwaba telling me nice things in his low voice that has just the right amount of grrr. But the timing here is key. 
Addressing the same issue once, maybe twice directly is completely fine as a lot of awful and disturbing things happen towards the end and dealing with fear is also part of being human. Having the two characters help each other out and dealing with their problems gives their relationship more depth, creating a very organic and comforting feeling. Having the same conversation five times over the course of the last five chapters, however, undermines that, quickly begins to feel forced and repetitive, and most importantly takes away the impact when the timing is finally right. All five roots suffer from this constant back and forth between the characters behaving like human beings and behaving like your stereotypical romance main character is supposed to. Once the scene is over, everyone steps back to the normal selves until the next chapter requires another romantic moment. Towards the end, Code Realize has some minor hiccups concerning character motivation, especially for Cardia's father, who is the reason why we are even on this journey. I would have wished for a slightly more original backstory. The ending is the conceit and should summarize everything we have learned so far, but everything happens so fast that there is little room to process this rather meaningful event and the uninspired way of conveying it takes away suspense. Something that disappointed me personally. If you prefer to give the main character and visual novels your own name, be aware that it can only have six letters. Christine has seven. But you know, Abby, for example, has five, Talia has six. It's not like I'm indicating anything, I'm just saying. But, and this is important, I'm willing to overlook all the things I mentioned before. Oh yes, on occasion, they annoy the hell out of me and I wish some of those tropes would just die in a fire. But everything else is so well executed. What I'm looking for in an Otome game is confidence. You would assume that this goes without saying. Of course, a game targeted at girls and women in this day and age should make them feel empowered and strong, while at the same time clearing up old ideas about gender roles. As a matter of fact, that is not the case. A lot of the games, anime or manga made me feel small and stupid, downgrading the female character to a helpless girl with no other purpose than to react to the whims of the supposed love interest. In the end, the boys will always somewhat come around, teaching me that I will win a guy's heart by silently putting up with abuse and waiting. This is how we've been telling love stories targeted at women for decades. The complexity of why we tell them that way offers enough for a standalone video, and it's exactly why I am so sick of them. Amnesia is a prime example for that. It's a visual novel too, and just like Cardia, the main girl has lost her memories. Hence the title. Your goal in Amnesia is to regain your memories without anyone noticing it. That way the game turned my love interest into an antagonist. As it is a text-based game, your progress and end are determined by the decisions you make over the course of the story. Every time I base the decisions on finding out more about me and not what the boys might want to hear, Amnesia killed me off. I had to make decisions based on arbitrary knowledge I couldn't have and got punished for behaving like a human being with motives and personality. Not only is this message more than questionable, first and foremost it speaks of terrible and half-baked gaming mechanics, turning Amnesia into a rather frustrating experience of trial and error. None of this is happening in Code Realize, making it a perfect entry if you want to get into visual novels. I didn't have to bother about parameters and which kind of answer each boy might want to hear. I was able to act like the human being I am and the game worked with my answers. The game makes it fairly obvious which decisions drive the story and which decisions influence whose last five chapters you're going to see. Even as a purely text-based game, Code Realize has a learning curve. Just like you, Cardi has no idea how this world works. So the characters begin to introduce her to the peculiarities of steampunk London. Of Cardia's own volition, each one of them begins to train her in his own particular arts. She wants to be a real part of the group, bringing her as close to ice level with the male characters as it's possible when you're dealing with the world's greatest thief, a fearless vampire killer, a genius engineer, a royal alchemist, and Saint-Germain, who's a little bit of everything. One of the first things you learn is to look out for yourself. And only if you are behaving against the rules the game explained to you, the guys will scold you. And you don't want that to happen, do you? Or well, maybe you want to. I'm not judging. <laughs> 
The moments I enjoyed the most were the ones we spent as a group setting up plans to break into Buckingham Palace, dealing with money problems or simply joking around. And thanks to witty and lively dialogue, even the less action-packed or less romantic scenes never felt tedious, which is why the game never has to rely on pure exposition in the first half. Instead, it brings you into situations that teach you everything you need to know. Lupin is the first character you meet, especially at the beginning, he is always by your side and somewhat guiding you through the story. As easygoing as he is during your everyday life, he is stern when it comes to his honor as a thief. Impy is a little bit of a mess, but behind his flirtatious and joking nature, he too is warm-hearted and has an aversion towards violence. Victor is easily flustered but very kind and worries about you. As the story progresses, he approaches you every time you seem to struggle. Van Helsing always seems a bit moody and stoic and has his own ways of looking out for the people around him. Because it's... it's not that he likes them or anything. saint germain is the most mysterious character in the group. He does show an interest in everything around him, but it never gets clear what he's actually planning and Cardia admits this too quite early in the game. Cardia herself is one of the most enjoyable characters. She's able to read situations, keep up with the conversation or add new perspectives and has a great sense of humor. Only because she's not just a silent pawn, this feeling of comfort around everyone can even begin to exist. You also meet a mixed bag of supporting characters who are all more or less relevant to the main plot, depending on the individual roots of the mayor characters. Each one of them is surprisingly well developed once you get to know him, and has more personality than some of the main characters in other Otoge. The same goes for the villains. As I said earlier, every once in a while I'm not so sure whether the love interests in Otoge or romance anime are even on my side. Since this is not the case here, you can and you should be wary around them. At the same time, they are not just one-dimensional cardboard cutouts that are only evil for the sake of being evil. They too come with a unique set of conflicts and while I do wish we'd gone just a tiny bit further in exploring them, the impact and depth of the topics addressed surprised me in each and every replay. So while you are busy fighting evil and winning the hearts of handsome men, the game casually addresses more than relevant topics like responsibility in science, religion, sacrificing one life to save the many, and so much more. The first thing that really stood out to me though was the soundtrack, starting with the opening. I have a thing for the combination of Ward's Time and Shembano, together with Singer Mao's smoky voice and modern elements, it was a great entry to get you from 2016 back to 1853. Then of course there's the awesomeness that is the instrumental soundtrack composed by Hijiri Anze, which contributes to the very cinematic feeling of the game. It features 25 songs, reaching from once fitting to the different situations you're about to encounter, as well as character songs, introducing the pearl with jazz, immediate danger with screeching violence, and a calm moment spent with a character of your choice with three piano tunes. In combination with sound effects like footsteps and chatter, as well as the sounds of the various steam machines, gunshots and shells falling to the ground, it created the necessary feeling of tension and motion during action scenes, although you never get to see anything that would resemble classic animation. Staying with the audible things, an amazing voice cast brings all of the characters to life. Yuki Kaji surprised me with his very natural performance in Nobunaga Concerto. As Venus, one of the main villains in Code Realize, his over-the-top reactions really paid. Off. Although every one of his scenes gave me an eerie feeling, I was looking forward to them. His charisma made being creeped out an intense and fun experience. Naturally, I expected the exact opposite from the five men voicing Cardia's potential love interest, and they didn't fail me. Ever since Akatsuki Yuna, I started paying more attention to Tomoaki Maino. In Code Realize, his voice has about the same pitch as in Akatsuki Yuna, but this time around a much more dapper and cheerful tone, which embodies Lupin's character. Combine it with his cheeky grin, and it won't surprise you that he swooped me right off my feet. Literally. I consider Junichi Suwaba one of the voice actors with the highest recognition value and also an interesting person. I have to admit though that I was slightly disappointed this time around, not because of his performance but because Van Helsing is very short spoken and always sounds a little bit indifferent. I assume I felt let down because my favorite roles of his like Jeha and Akatsuki Yuna or Ren and Utapri have very different personalities compared to Van Helsing. That only proves Suwaba's great range as an actor though. Ima. 
I completely blamed Tetsuya Kakihara for making me fall head over heels for Victor. I was planning to go for Van Helsing on my first playthrough. That changed the moment Victor said his first lines. Everything about him is so kind and sweet and gentle that I just couldn't handle it on occasion, especially when it involved chuckling. There really isn't much to say about Daisuke Hirakawa, he just kills it in everything romance themed. Compared to some of his other works, he has a very soft and comforting tone in Code Realize. Sanjama also uses Keigo the entire time, which emphasizes his position as a count, but also creates some kind of distance. I've had my issues with Shotaro Morikobo in Stamu. Although he absolutely doesn't look his age, you slowly begin to hear that he's not a teenager anymore. He is perfect, as Kurt realizes flamboyant genius engineer though. Morikobo brings across both sides of Impi splendidly, making his bold and unintentional statements on one hand and his considerate and thoughtful side on the other very believable. I also have to point out the very well done localization by Axis Games. Compared to English, Japanese tends to be a bit more vague and leaves a lot more room for interpretation, making translations that are too close to the original often hard to understand. Axis's translation didn't take away any of the character's original charm, but rather added to it by taking their origin and personality into account. Le Pop, for example, addresses Kali as Mademoiselle the entire time, making him even more a dashing gentleman thief than he already is. The amount of typos, though, was a little bit embarrassing. Of course, I loved how the game integrated the literary and historical context of the characters and the source material they've been taken from. Victorian London and the steampunk environment serve as the right playground for that, and numerous detailed background illustrations and gorgeous character CGs revive it. Although you only get to see freeze images, I found it incredibly easy to get into the world. Everything worked perfectly together to suck you right in, giving you the impression of walking the streets of London with the characters. The steampunk elements don't only serve as a setup for dandy clothing, machines and buildings. The game spends time on explaining you how this version of the Industrial Revolution came about. It creates its own lore to ground the more or less fantastical things you're about to encounter and adds a lived-in feeling. Despite my slow start in this review, I have completely fallen for this game in its unique atmosphere. Code Realize is not just another flawed and cliched love story. If Code Realize is anything, it's an adventure where two people just happen to fall in love. I laughed with Cardia's gang and I cried with them, sometimes out of happiness, sometimes out of grief. The hardest I cried was when the end credits rolled for the last time though. Not because the ending was particularly sad, no, it was actually quite sweet but because the realization sank in that it's now time to let go. Code Realize is currently only available for PlayStation Vita and sadly only very few people in the West seem to love the Vita. The question is, is it worth buying a console for one game? You have to answer this for yourself according to the balance of your bank account, but let me give you some input. All in all, I needed about 25 hours for my first playthrough. That includes listening to every line of dialogue and spending a good amount of time just ogling the character CGs. To complete the entire game, I needed about 70 hours. That is probably not sustainable enough to justify buying a PlayStation Vita, but there are many more great visual novels out there like Steins Gate and Sweet Fuse. Of course, there are the Persona games and you can buy older PSP games in Sony's PlayStation Store. Compared to Nintendo, Sony knows how to handle sales. If you already own a Sony console, you might be aware of the subscription service PlayStation Plus, which comes with free games every month. The Vita isn't region locked either, giving you the possibility of importing games from everywhere in the world. Clear disadvantages are the limited disk space and the stupidly expensive Sony exclusive memory cards. Should you consider buying one, make sure to buy a used one as the old PlayStation Vita still comes with a gorgeous OLED screen and overall higher production value compared to the new PlayStation Vita Slim. If you don't want to buy a PlayStation Vita, which is understandable, all you need to do is wait. An anime adaptation has been announced to come out this year. This can go one of two ways. Hand it over to an amazing studio and team. Leave the story the way it is, just tell it in a slightly different order and more economical fashion hereby creating something that has the potential to become my favorite anime of all times. Or you could hand it over to a fresh and studio and unexperienced stuff that cuts out everything that made the game unique. 
turning Cardi and her useless damsel in distress and pretty much breaking my heart in the process. I really hope that doesn't happen because you could have so much fun with this source material. In case you haven't noticed, I talk about voice actors a lot. Certain voice actors can make me want to check out the show and I'm discovering new people every day. I'd like to talk about the ones I came to like last year in my next video while also figuring out the thing I have been dying to start for at least 8 months now. If you're interested in that then don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. I'm a, I'm a